first glance, the style of Norman Rockwell's paintings are easy to identify. We tend to associate these images with the 1940s during World War II and the 50s with the poodle skirts, romance, and roller skates. Sometimes you just love the stuff he makes so much that you save all your money to buy a honking ginormous book just like I did. So here's a lot of facts that make Norman Rockwell such an interesting guy. Here's a short biology of Rockwell's life before we get to the juicy stuff. Norman Rockwell was born on February 3rd, 1894, New York City. By the age of 16, he dropped out of high school to pursue his passion for drawing and painting in the National Academy of Design in New York. When he graduated, he worked by making covers for the Boys Life magazine. His first piece for Boys Life was Scout at Ship's Wheel in 1913. By the time he was 22, he was hired by the Saturday Evening Post, and this is where things get really interesting. Throughout his career, he has created 321 masterpieces for the Saturday Evening Post for over 50 whole years. For the Post, his paintings are often of children, family life, romance, and sometimes sequential stories like A Day in the Life of a Boy, A Day in the Life of a Girl, and The Gossips. In his style, there are qualities that are consistent throughout most of his paintings. For example, women are usually portrayed as dainty and elegant, while men are animated with cartoonish gestures and action, such as window washer, after the prom, the letterman, the milkmaid, and croquet. Though much of what he made is primarily cartoony for the purpose of standing out, Rockwell retains so much realism and attention to detail that the viewer cannot absorb the entire image at first glance. Some examples are the new television set, Shuffleton's Barbershop, Solitaire, Saiyan Grace, and the University Club. There is also an incredible attention to detail to the human features that are most especially found in his portraits of the elderly. For example, the hobo, Family Saiyan Grace, Two Old Friends collection, and my personal favorite, there is one portrait of Two Old Friends, Summer, which is a reference to his old work, No Swimming. Rockwell is especially talented with ink and pencil sketches, and depicted daily life for the Mutual Life Insurance Company, Crest Toothpaste, and full painted posters for the Coca-Cola Company. He is also very elusive in sneaking his own self-portraits in the covers he made. To start, here is the triple self-portrait. Now you know what he looks like, see if you could find him hiding in his other works like The Holdout and The Right to Know. Give up? He's on the far right. He's got a pipe in his mouth. Oh my gosh, he's everywhere! It's like playing Where's Waldo with this guy! He then created paintings with historical significance, such as Yankee Doodle, Matthew Brady photographing Lincoln, and illustrated books like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and the autobiography of Louisa May Alcott called Most Beloved American Writer. He also painted social issues, especially those regarding the civil rights movement, like New Kids in the Neighborhood and A Problem We All Live With. He also created pieces that reflected the flavor of the world at the time of World War II, such as The Story of the Lost Battalion, Homecoming, The War Hero, Package from Home, and the famous Rosie the Riveter. Norman Rockwell also received an award by President Gerald Ford for painting a significant aspect of the World War II speech, the freedom of speech and expression, freedom of religion, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. After an entire 50 years of his life making covers for the Saturday Evening Post, his final creation was of John F. Kennedy on December 14, 1963. And that concludes my short and sweet presentation of Norman Rockwell. But it doesn't actually end there. Did you know that you could find the actual photographed references he used for his paintings? His accuracy to life is uncanny. Not only that, you could also visit the museum dedicated to him in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. I hope you enjoyed my fangirling about one of my most favorite artists, and I would like to hear about your favorites. Thank you for watching.